Okay, the second bit of question for asks us to do PRIM's algorithm starting from D to find a minimum spanning tree um, for these edges on this table for. So if we just have a look at that using PRIM's. We're starting from D, so we label D um, up vertex 1. Okay, we don't want to come back to D, so we'll just pop a line through D there and just joining D onto our beginning of our spanning tree. We can see that the shortest edge connecting D to anything else here is the 33 that connects it to G. So I'll put my 33 on here. Okay, it connects it to G, and when you're doing prims, it's really important to show the order. So there are two ways in which you can do that. You can either just label this vertex up, um, sorry, this edge up saying first, okay, or you might want to just um, put a little table at the side saying, um, showing that you've added the G in first, that's of length 33. Now, we don't want to come back to G, so we'll cross through the rest of the column. OK, and I'll put my two on here. It's not sufficient, though, to just put the numbers at the beginning of the row on the table here, because of the fact that if you've got more than one circle in the same row, the examiner can't tell which order you've added them in. So um, that's not sufficient. You do need to have the order shown somewhere else in your question. Now, the next one along, um, when you come to add your next edge, for prims, not like nearest neighbour, but for prims, you look down both of the rows at the same time to find the shortest edge that you can add. And of course, out of the two rows, 12 is your shortest edge. Okay, so we'll just pop that on here now. So this distance is now 12. And of course, that connects G to H. So I'll pop H down here. And we do need to show GH is our next edge that we add. So we can either write it up here. GH comes next with a length of 12. Or we can just write on the diagram that that's the second one that we've added. Right, we'll cross through H. We don't want to come back to it. It's in the tree. And um, I'll just put here that this is the third one that we're looking at, the third vertex. OK, and this time we look through all three rows to see which is the shortest edge that we should now be adding. Shortest out of the three rows is the 31. And that connects G to K with a distance of 31. Now, of course, um, this edge is going to have to sort of come out of the middle here. So I'm, I'll just um, pop that label for G up a little bit. And um, we'll just add in an edge for the minimum spanning tree um, coming out of G and going towards K. So I'll just label that up now. So I can pop K down here. That's a distance of... 31, that's my third edge, okay, and I'll just put down here, just another way of writing the order, which the examiner needs to see, GK is 31, that's the next edge to be added in. Just move H a little bit further away so we've got more space. rid of the K column, we don't want to accidentally come back to K. And that's the fourth vertex that we've added in. So now to choose our next vertex, of course we've got all of these rows that we've added in that we need to consider. Okay, so the D, G, H and K row, and we're looking for the smallest value that we can find in those three rows. And the smallest, of course, is the 43. That connects D to I. So now we just need to 
add that in. So I'll add that to the spanning tree there. connecting our pi, 43, okay that's now the fourth edge, okay or you could have it in the table showing the order, di length 43. Cross through the column, we don't want to accidentally come back to I. Label it up as vertex number 5. Okay, now we can consider any of these rows that we've got so far. We're looking for the shortest edge there, which is the 23. And you can see that that connects I to S. So that's one last edge that we want to add in. We'll just pop a little edge going from I to S, label that up with an S and it's length 23 and if you're putting your order on the diagram we'll call that fifth here or the other way of course to show the order in which you've added the edges is just to add in here a little table on the side showing the order in which you've done them SI of length 23. That's your minimum spanning tree. Um, so notice here it does say show the order in which you selected the edges. Okay, so that needs to be quite clear to the examiner. So you either need to have the first, second, third, fourth, fifth on the actual spanning tree itself, or you need to have um, just a little um, list going on at the sides. Okay, if you write order at the top, then it's quite clear what that is. We need for our spanning tree to get the total distance there. So 31 plus 12, that's going to be 43, plus another 33, so that's 76, plus another 43, so that's um, 79, 119, plus 23. So 119 plus 23 is going to be 142. So your spanning tree is of length 142 minutes. Now notice it says hence find the lower bound. Usually when you do the lower bound algorithm we're um, just told to use the lower bound algorithm but there's a hence here so what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to look at um, the original table that we had when we were doing the nearest neighbour for the last part of the question and you'll see here table 3 is a larger table than table 4 it's got an extra vertex in which they've got rid of so usually of course um, we would do that deleting the vertex ourselves, but they've done it for us so we know that that's the one which we need to use to get the two shortest edges from it so just having a look here be the missing vertex we would usually cross out that and then do prims on what's left but in the B row we can see that the two shortest edges are going to be 18 and um, 21. So I'll just oops, pop a little ring around those. There's the 18. There's the 21. Sometimes I do like to illustrate it on here. So we've got B, D, and G. BG is the distance of 18. BD is the distance of 21. It's useful to actually draw it out because sometimes the two edges that you have um, here fit together with the spanning tree to actually make a whole cycle. It hasn't happened in this case. Okay, so we can see here that the total distance there is um, 39 for those two shortest edges that we found, 39 minutes. So that means that your lower bound, you'll be adding the two shortest edges from the vertex that they got rid of for B. And 
and um, the total length of your spanning tree, which was 142. And if you add those together, um, we'll see what they had in the mark scheme there. So you've got your 142, adding the 39 gives you 181. And you can see the, the way that they've marked that there. Now the very last bit of the question, um, after doing the lower bound algorithm where you add together the length of your spanning tree and the two shortest edges um, from the vertex that was deleted, is to actually write down an interval or an inequality um, using your answer to part A and your answer to part B. So if we just have a look at how to do that, um, for your inequality, the total from um, using the lower bound algorithm turned out to be 181. The two parts, the spanning tree and the two shortest edges, didn't actually fit together to make a tree. So I'm not going to put um, an equals bit, sorry, um, it didn't fit together to, to form a, a cycle. So I'm not going to put the equals bit on my inequality here. So the lower band goes on the left-hand side of the inequality. The crocodile's mouth is always facing towards the larger number. Now this right-hand bit does always take an equal sign. Okay, you wouldn't in previous past paper mark schemes. I, I've seen them put this on here, but it's not really technically correct if these two don't fit together to form a, uh, an actual cycle. And then if we just flip back to where we did the um, nearest neighbor algorithm, you can see our distance was 238 using the nearest neighbor. So I'm just going to fill that in with 238 here. So your interval, by interval they really mean inequality. The right hand value always comes from using the nearest neighbor. And the left hand value comes from using the lower bound algorithm. This one should always take an equal sign. This one shouldn't really if um, the two edges that you've used for your um, part of the lower band algorithm don't fit together with this spanning tree to form a cycle and they don't you can't match D and G up with the rest of this thing. Now remember the crocodile's mouth, crocodiles are greedy so they like to be facing towards the, the largest thing that they 